Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be putting together a crew using these awesome dwarves from the new game, Torch and Shield. Here we go then, Torch and Shield. I covered this on the channel a couple of weeks ago, so if you'd like to check that out, I'll link to it at the end of the video. But one of my favourite parts of the game, and most skirmish games actually, is putting together a warband, or in this case, a crew. So let's do it. On page 98 of the rulebook, you can see it's got the creating a crew section here, and it tells you everything you need to do. I really like how they put this together. You choose a clan, and then to recruit them, you've got 100 gold coins, and then you can recruit two heroes, and you're only allowed one grey shield though, so you can end up with one fame and one grey shield, and then you can have up to three short beards, which are these guys here, and then as many clansmen as you want, but the maximum is going to be 15 warriors in any group. So these are the four, and you build them with those, and then you've got all the equipment here to choose from. I really like the amount of equipment that they give you to choose from. It's not too much, but certainly enough to give a good flavour and a mix of different warriors. And then if you go to this page here, one of the reference sheets, you've got the equipment reference sheet there, and that's going to tell you all the details about the weapons that you need when pricing up, like how much they cost, how many hands you can use, because you've got a rule called the three hand rule in this game. And it tells you all about that on page 57. It says that many items in Torch and Shield will have either one hand or two hands in the equipment profile. And warriors can carry up to three hands worth of equipment at any time. And then this armory section is going to go into a bit more detail about the weapons. You're going to get to see images. You've got all the traits explained and basically everything you need to know there. Really nice. Some nice old school D&D style imagery, which I really like and illustration. So that's really fun. And the whole vibe of this game is very old school, which I think is brilliant. It's right up my street. And when you combine the aesthetic of the rulebook with the actual models, I think they've done a great job of syncing them up. And I've been looking for some proper dwarves for ages. I think I've got some decent ones, some squats from Necromunda, but I've never found any that have really made me want to put together any kind of warband and play as dwarves. The Lord of the Rings dwarves, they're almost there, but there was something missing. And I think this game, Torch and Shield, has really filled that gap. So yeah, I'm really excited about this, actually. These are really cool. And you can see all the different traits you can give them as well. When you put together the crew and you choose your Grey Shield and your Thane, you get to choose different traits like Shield Breaker, Planner, Immovable, Calculated, then that's going to have an impact on how you run your crew. So very nice, very simple. I really like the simplicity of it, but with enough variety there that you could certainly make lots of different crews. And then when you build in all the different clans, then you just got loads of options. And I've got two clans for us to have a look at here in the video, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's just check out the blank cards that you can print off and download as a PDF as well and get those filled out if you want to start from scratch. But in the book, they also give you two sets of seven and these are two different clans and they're all kitted out ready to do battle and if you get the box you get the cards as well here so it's really cool of them to send me out the whole box the prototype sets to have a look at and share with you here on the channel and you can see the cards are all filled out ready to go so what i'm going to do is i'm going to build the models in line with these cards and the great thing about this is it's what you see is what you get as well so we're playing WYSIWYG with these models which i'm a big fan of too so I've got them all laid out, they're all prepped. Bear in mind these ones are all going to be 3D printed, but when you get them they are going to be cast. And the method they'll be using is the Sciocast Plastic, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen that yet, I'd definitely recommend having a look online. It's a really good process and I think these are going to come out so crisp. But if you wanted to print them off yourself, you can actually get the STL files from the Kickstarter as well. You don't have to get the models printed. So you can get the PDF book, get the STL files, and then just print these at home. And this is going to be like some of the quality you can expect. These are just brilliant. And I'm going to get them painted up as well later on. So you will be seeing that in future videos. Let's have a quick look at one of the cards then. So this is Thorim the Thane, and you can see it lists all the characteristics and the equipment here. And so I'm going to build him to look exactly like that. He's a leader as well, and he'll be leading the crew or the clan of the Iron Thanes into battle. And what I really like about how they put these together is the hands have all got like the little ball joints on there. So you've got some variety on how you can position them, but they go together so easily, as you'll see once we start building them in the moment. But really nice. The model bases are fantastic as well. There's going to be some variety there. So have a good read through the 
Kickstarter if you are looking to get them. But let's go and get them built up and then we can put them all assembled on the table. You can have a real good up close look at the models, have a look at the quality and hopefully that will help you decide whether or not you're after some proper dwarves like these two and you'd like to add them to your collection. So here we are at the desk then and you, I've got all the components ready and I can definitely recommend if you're using any kind of resin to go with the Loctite Super Glue Power Gel. I use this all the time, it's really good stuff and I'm just going to squeeze some of that out onto the feet but before I do that a little tip is to just grab a file and anytime you're using super glue if you can just file away gently at the areas that you're going to bond together and this really helps to get a nice quick adhesion. When you've done that make sure it's all like wiped off just blow it and then get rid of all that dust and then you're ready to then just put the glue on when it's nice and clean and so with this you just put a little blob on on each part that's going to make contact and the good thing about filing is you can see where it's dead flat so you know the contact points exactly where they're going to be as well and then just put a little blob of glue on each part and then with these wobbly bases you want to find some of the flatter cobblestones to stick it to rest that model on there and I find just holding it for five to ten seconds that's great or you could even just stand it up on the table and let the weight of the model do the work for you but I'll hold it here just to show you and there we go that's pretty much it and we'll pop that down. I'll leave it about 30 seconds before grabbing some of the other components. And here you can see that ball joint on the hand. And this is just makes it so easy to build. I'll also put a little bit on these sections here because I think some of those are going to touch the base. Only one part actually does in the end, but I did it on both anyway. And then I'll put a nice blob on the ball joint. And then that's going to fit into the hole, the socket, if you like, in the wrist really well. And so, yeah, these are probably some of the easiest ones I've ever built. Really nice how to do it like this. I think this is a really good method. And I haven't got that many 3D printed models, actually. So I wonder if this is something that's quite common or what. But yeah, that goes in there. There you go. Really nice and easy, all put together and just looks great. I love the detail on these models. and I think they're going to paint up really well. The traditional painting method is going to certainly work well on these guys, I think. And one thing I really particularly like about that model is the little uh, wind up handle there, like a ratchet on the front of the crossbow. I think that's so cool. Right, let's put a little lantern on as well. And you'll find that in the game, the darkness plays a big part in it. So you certainly want some lanterns and torches. And here we go, I'll get this torch one, bit of glue on there again on the ball joint. And then we'll pop that in place. And they fit so nicely, the ball joint and the socket are just like made perfectly so these are going to go in and you've got a little bit of flexibility about angles and things but there we go just pop that in hold it for a few seconds and we're good to go so that's our first model built now i'm going to go and build them all and then we'll get some close-up shots of the two different clans and just talk a little bit about each one and some of the differences that they'll bring but doesn't this guy look great the beards are awesome the nose is just right Really good details on the faces as well. And I like just everything about them. I just think they're like proper dwarves, real old school. And here they are all lined up on their cards. Lots of different poses as well. So then all looking in the same position, which is nice. And then they've got all different beards, different hats, different faces. So there's so much variety here. So I think if you wanted to combine the two clans, you can certainly do that as well. So if you want to have lots of dwarves in your crew, you can certainly do it. Let's have a close up look at some of them. This is Hergen. He's a clansman for the Copper Brows and Copper Brow crews benefit from an array of black powder weapons and have units like engineers and gun thanes to put them to use. And they can also take Knights of the Crown. So these are proficient fighters and they come with lots of plate armor as well. And you can see here really good selection of beards, proper mustaches, nice hats and then some of those like ranged weapons. So really cool look. And these are the Copper Brows. Now let's go and have a look at the Iron Thanes. And here we've got Bramond and he's a clansman as well. And you can see he's got a brew there, which is a cool touch. And then we've got Morak, who's the Grey Shield and he's gonna be the leader. And so the Iron Thanes, they'll win by executing their battle plan with ordered military precision. And they like to use shield walls, which allow them to defend their hard won territory, while units like the Siege Thane and Weapon Thane can break any defense. So there you go, you've got different clans, all with a little different flavor about them. There's another one called the Bulldars as well, and you can see that on the Kickstarter, and that link will be down below. But all up, some fantastic dwarves, really nice models. The game's got a lot going for it. And I think if you're looking for some proper dwarves and an old school vibe, you'll really love this game. And if you want to find out more about the game itself, check out this video that I'll link to 
at the end of this video and then I go through all the contents of the box. You'll see tokens, the tiles, you'll see the monsters which are really fun as well. So lots to have a look at and all of this of course is going to be detailed on their Kickstarter and there's less than 48 hours to go so there's still time to get in there and add a pledge to back it. They've done so well they were looking for what 4,000 99 pounds is their goal. They're currently on 26,000 and just doing so well. So really happy for them. They certainly deserve it. They've put together a really great looking game here. Some fantastic models and I think there's a lot going for this game. So it'd be awesome if you go and check it out. And I'd love to hear what you think about the dwarves. So add some comments down below. That'd be great too. A massive thank you to Torch and Shield for sending me out the pack to share with you. Hope you've enjoyed having a look at the dwarves and the other video where I go through all the contents and everything about the game. And thank you also to my other sponsors and supporters for helping me keep going with these daily videos. If you'd like to watch some other content here on the channel, you might enjoy this video where I painted a Viking called Bjorn for Gates of Nilheim. I'll also be bringing you some more Warlord game unboxing this week for Bolt Action. And of course, Moonstone, some really cool stuff lined up for Moonstone. We're doing another unboxing this week and then we're starting some battle reports. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button, subscribe to keep up to date with all the news. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.